David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a fairly new pen from Lamy, which I've been looking forward to checking out for a long time, ever since it was announced in mid-2020. Uh, that pen has been delayed. It was originally expected to go on sale in September of 2020, but wasn't ultimately released until about a year later. So my wait was extended. But thanks to the good folks at Applebaum, I was finally able to get my hands on one. And that pen is the Lamy Dialog CC. Like the Dialog 3, which came before this pen, I feel that uh, it'll be a bit polarizing. There'll be some folks who really care for it, and there'll be others who do not. Uh, in regard to how I feel about it, uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique offering, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. The pen arrives in this gift box. Uh, inside we have the pen as well as a little pen sleeve. And also uh, underneath the tray uh, it comes with a five pack of Lamy proprietary cartridges. Um, it also comes with this nice manual as well. Uh, the manual is a bit odd because virtually all of the pictures and graphics uh, that relate to the pen uh, only relate to the Dialog 3, which as you'll see is very similar to the CC. Um, there's just one picture of here in the back of all of the available models uh, and uh, the CC was included in this one. Um, also included is this little tool that you could use while cleaning the pen. During the writing sample, I'll demonstrate how to use it. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the pen itself. This is the Lamy Dialog CC. Lamy's Dialog line is comprised of three, actually four now, different uniquely designed pens. There was the Dialog 1, which was a ballpoint. The Dialog 2 is a rollerball. Then there is the Dialog 3, which is a fountain pen. And then finally, we have this pen here, the Dialog CC. Now, I'm not 100% certain what CC stands for. I spent an inordinately long time trying to research and find out, but came up with a blank. The most logical thing would be it stands for cartridge converter, which is the filling mechanism used on this pen. So for now, I'll just go with that assumption. The CC is made from metal, and it's available in two different colors and finishes. Uh, this is the white model here, which has a smooth piano lacquer finish. And then there is a blue model, which has more of a matte finish. Both versions have rose gold plated trim. Uh, this is a bit of an odd pen. Uh, there is no cap, no section, no finials, anything like that. The nib extends and retracts. Uh, and overall, this pen has what Lamy describes as a noble look. Uh, let's take a look at the nib end of this pen. The tip is encircled by a bit of black plastic. Um, it has Germany stamped on it, which is where Lamy pens are manufactured. On the Dialog 3, this piece felt a little softer and a bit more rubbery, um, and it didn't have the uh, country branding. Then we have the retractable dome, which swivels out of the way when you activate the mechanism. Uh, here's what it looks like with just the nib beginning to peek out. Um, then we have the first of the three main differences between the CC and the Dialog 3. Um, the Dialog 3 had a clip which would extend and retract as you activated the nib. On the CC, the clip has been replaced by what the company calls a plaque and roller brake. Uh, basically a branded roll stop. I think it looks nice and the stamping is nice as well. While I really enjoyed the mechanical action of the Dialog 3 clip, it was a bit superfluous, so I understand the effort to simplify things a bit in the design and inner workings of the pen. The barrel is straight and the transition from the front to back halves of the body is decently smooth. Now for the second of the changes, this back half of the barrel is about three quarters of an inch shorter than on the Dialog 3. Um, you can see how they compare here. Um, one of the issues that some folks had with the Dialog 3 is they felt it was a bit too long. Um, it kind of feels like you're writing with a hot dog. Um, with the shorter back end, that actually serves to reduce that feeling a little bit. Um, now for the third and final main difference. On the Dialog 3, the end of the pen was rounded, but here on the CC, it's flattened, well, curved a little bit, and ends with a piece of rose gold plated metal. 
Um, I do like the curve they implemented here. I think that if the end was just flat, um, it would look like someone just cut off the back end of the pen. So adding this element gives the pen a feeling like the design was a bit more intentional. Now, in order to operate the mechanism, you simply twist the back end of the pen. Um, it is fairly smooth and provides very satisfying movement. I do find myself playing with this mechanism a lot. Um, I also like that it's not completely silent. It provides just enough noise to let you know that something mechanical is going on, but not so loud that if you were in a meeting or a room with other people, that would draw attention. Once you extend the nib, you are presented with this 14 karat gold nib. Uh, I believe this is Lamy's Z55 nib. Uh, you could tell Lamy's gold nibs, apart from their stainless steel ones, by the gold stripe down the length of the slit. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. As I mentioned earlier, this pen is devoid of a traditional section. Um, I feel this is one of the more polarizing features of this pen. Um, the barrel has a width of almost 14 millimeters. While that works for me personally, I like larger sections, I could see how for someone with smaller hands, this could be rather cumbersome and potentially uncomfortable. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It utilizes Lamy's proprietary system, so you will either need to use Lamy branded cartridges uh, or one of their Z27 converters, one of which is provided. In order to ink the CC, you screw off the back half, and then you have to unscrew this nib housing. Um, I kind of like that this housing has a bit of a knurled part to make it easier to remove. Um, I also like that uh, having that knurling actually provides you with a visual clue that you're doing something correctly. Uh, that unscrewing it here is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I've always thought that knurling was kind of cool. And then this is what the nib unit looks like when it's removed. Uh, you know what? Actually, there is one more difference between this and the Dialog 3. The CC includes this ink window in the housing, which is very helpful in order to see the quality of the fill that you're receiving. Um, in order to ink the pen, you simply dip this nib unit into the bottled ink of your choice, wipe it off, and then you are going to go ahead and screw it back in, and then you will be good to go. Um, at the Applebaum site, the Lamy Dialog CC retails for right around $300, depending on the currency conversion. Uh, in comparison, the Dialog 3 retails for about $240. Both of those prices are a little bit less than I've seen throughout some other retailers. I'll put a link in the notes below so you can check this pen out on the Applebaum site. Um, overall, I think this pen looks pretty sharp. Um, I've always been a big fan of the Dialog 3. Of the two colors, I think that I personally prefer the matte blue over this piano white, but this white does provide a sleek, intriguing look for this very unique offering. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons. I'll show you how to use that included tool intended to help you with the cleaning of this pen, as well as provide a writing sample. So here we have a look at the Lamy Dialog CC. I wanted to give you a little bit of a closer look at this mechanism and how you could see this circular door as I twist it back and forth kind of opens up and then the nib extends from there. We'll look at it from the side so you can see the nib extends out. But I think it's really cool how that door just kind of rotates down and then comes out. Uh, and then it's nice because then when it's sealed, it's fairly airtight. Maybe it's not 100% airtight, but enough to keep this pen from drying out. Uh, in regard to some size comparisons, um, I briefly showed it earlier, but this is what it looks like with the Dialog 3. You can see that the Dialog 3 is a, a bit longer. And in regard to a couple of other black pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor King of Pen Ebonite. And then in regard to a few other Lamy pens, all of which are silver, um, here it is with a Studio. And then here it is with an All Star. And then finally, here it is with the stainless steel version of the Lamy 2000. I told you I'd show you what this little tool is. 
And it's used for when you want to clean the pen. So if you take this out, you remove this, but if you wanted to clean the pen, then the door is still closed. But if you attach this and twist it, then you twist a little bit more there and the door is open. Um, also, I found an easy way of doing this if you don't have that tool, is there is little notches in here and you have a quarter and that works really well as well. So you can use a quarter if for some reason that tool isn't available and you can see here that you can see all the way down in there. And they said that you could just run water through there and then let it dry and it's not gonna hurt any of the inner mechanism when you want to clean it. So here we have the writing sample for the Lamy Dialogue CC. Now actually they brand it with a lowercase d for dialogue and two c's in lowercase as well. This is a fine 14 karat gold nib and the ink that I'm using is Lamy Petrol. This is what the ink looks like. This was a limited edition ink from Lamy that became very popular. Uh, actually, when it came out, I bought two bottles of it and then I, uh, I gave one away. I can't remember exactly why I gave it away, um, but I, I did give one away on my channel. In regard to some comparison colors, since this is so hard to come by, um, it's very similar to the uh, Kiwi Ink Nebula Space Kitty. Um, it's not that far off from the Sailor Yamidori as well. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, and then just as a comparison, this is Mont Blanc's petrol, which is more of uh, on the blue side of things. This is what the Lamy ink bottles look like. I always think it's kind of cool here that it has things, the uh, paper here that you could tear off in order to clean the nib. I, you know what, to be honest, it's one of those things I think is really cool, but I really uh, don't use that that much. But I do think it's a cool feature to have. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I will say that this fine nib uh, really surprised me because uh, I'm not a huge fan of Lamy's fine and extra fine steel nibs. So when I saw that this one was a, a fine that I thought that it might still have some of that scratchiness and a kind of lower ink flow that I had seen from those models, but that's not the case. Um, you can get a fair amount of flex out of here. And I find that this fine nib is fairly smooth as well. In regard to ink flow, you can see here that it's fairly decent. And in regard to reverse writing, it is a little scratchy, but it does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. So there we have the Lamy Dialogue CC. Um, I think that this is a very interesting addition to the Dialogue lineup. I think it's different enough uh, so that it feels like it's a different pen from the Dialogue 3 with the difference in the clip and the back and being a little bit shorter. I feel there's enough differences here to kind of warrant a new version. And I care for this one a great deal, just like I do the, uh, the standard Dialogue 3. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.